students. This is Non-Flying Plants, and today we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to take the life cycle up to the seed plants, and we'll study cycads as our first seed plant. So let's have a little bit of an overview here. Uh, we still have meiosis and fertilization. We still have diploids and haploids, but there's this new sort of thing that's happening, and that's the seed. The seed really is a sporophyte inside of a gametophyte inside of the mother sporophyte. That's the dispersal unit. It goes out and claims new ground. It grows into a new sporophyte, and that new sporophyte can be either female or male. If it's female, it makes ovules, and if it's male, it makes pollen grains. These pollen grains are then dispersed during pollination, and pollination in many cycads happens via insects and maybe a little bit of wind and just sort of the filtering down of pollen grains through the air. A very, very lucky pollen grain lands on a pollination drop that is made or secreted by the ovule, and then the ovule sucks those pollen grains into its body. Eventually, the pollen grains will grow and make a sperm. The ovule during that period of time will have developed and developed, and eventually it will make eggs. The sperm and egg get together on fertilization and make a zygote. That zygote takes some time to grow into an embryo that will be inside of a seed, and then the seed will be dispersed. So let's start with a clean slate. And there's the seed. That seed is dispersed. When it's dispersed, it can grow up to be either a female sporophyte or a male sporophyte. If it's a female sporophyte, then it makes a female strobilus, a female cone, which I might call a megastrobilus. A megastrobilus will consist of a series of megasporophylls. Those megasporophylls will have ovules on them, sometimes two ovules or sometimes eight ovules or something in between. If we look at a, an ovule closely, it consists of an outer integument or uh, wall, and then there's a tissue inside of that, the nucellus. In the middle of the nucellus, a sporocyte forms, megasporocyte, and that megasporocyte undergoes meiosis and forms four megaspores. Three of those megaspores kind of disappear, and then there's one functional megaspore inside of the ovule. The ovule also has a little hole to the outside, and that hole is called a micropile, and it's through that micropile that the pollination drop will be secreted. Let's go back, though, and consider a different sporophyte, a male sporophyte that grows up, and that male sporophyte will end up having a male strobilus. That male strobilus will consist of a series of microsporophylls. On each microsporophyll, uh, there can be many microsporangia. Inside of each microsporangium, there's lots of microsporocytes. Those microsporocytes undergo meiosis and make microspores. And microspores are a lot like the spores that we've been talking about in other life cycles. The microspores have a couple of divisions uh, that make them into microgametophytes. There's a couple of cell divisions that happen. The first cell division makes for a prothallial cell. That's the vestige of the microgametophyte when it used to live outside of a spore wall. Then there's another cell division, and that makes for a tube cell and a generative cell. The generative cell will go on to make sperm. So pollen grains then get dispersed by animals and wind and whatnot in the process of pollination. And a very lucky pollen grain will end up on one of these pollination drops that's been secreted by an ovule. Then the pollination drop will dry up. It'll pull the pollen grains in through the micropile into a micropiler chamber. And those pollen grains, or microgametophytes, can develop further. They grow a pollen tube, and that's rooted in the nucellar tissue. 
and uh, then they eventually uh, can release sperm. Let's go back and consider the ovule it's developing. So remember we had a functional megaspore. That functional megaspore starts undergoing mitotic divisions and grows up to be a megagametophyte, a female gametophyte. That female gametophyte exists inside of the nucellus, which is inside of an integument. It grows and grows uh, and takes over most of the space of the nucellus. And then also the ovule is getting bigger and bigger as it grows. Some next cells will form and an archegonium will exist that consists of those next cells and an egg. And you'll have a couple of eggs that will form on that megagametophyte. The nucellus at this point is just a remnant of tissue at the top. And inside of that remnant of tissue, there's a couple of chambers that are filled with liquid. That's also where those pollen tubes have been growing. The microgametophytes live in there. The chambers eventually fuse together, and they're filled with liquid. We can call that a fertilization lake. The sperm are released from the microgametophytes, and they swim that last little fraction of a millimeter down to the egg. They fertilize that egg. And upon fertilization, the ovule becomes an immature seed. It still has to grow some. The zygote that's formed, it grows into an embryo. And that takes a while. The embryo would then be uh, a diploid organism that lives inside of its mother gametophyte, its mother megagametophyte. And that's inside of the integuments which have grown to be the seed walls or the seed coats. There's an inner seed coat that's hard and stony, and then there's an outer seed coat that's usually fleshy. I guess these things were eaten by dinosaurs uh, and maybe birds. They get the nutrition from the flesh, but then they cough up the stony thing, or maybe they poop it out. And they do that somewhat later, and so that's how dispersal is caused. And that is really all that I had to say about that.